Lee Warlock yet again. 61% of you think that Change My Mind will take it. Octagon, a new challenger in the arena, but they are going to try to step it up and they're going to try to prove 39% of you wrong. I was really happy to see Empire's performance in the series earlier today. He's definitely showing that he's a top dog on the Elemental Shaman, but going head-to-head -head with Change My Mind on Rogue Mage is going to be a test that he may not be prepared to pass. Sap on Empire. They are looking for Leanne in stealth. Eritros activates Infernals as his first global cooldown. Maybe getting a little bit ahead of himself there. I actually like it. I don't mind trying to deny the Rogue Mage setup, at least initially. Although the problem is changed my mind really didn't commit too much in that opener So they didn't have to run away. It's not like they used icy veins and then had to run or vendetta and have to run They really aren't getting counter pressured that much Acro right now caught into the bash a little bit of pressure as Empire does seem to be the main target of choice for change my mind Putting out a little damage there, but ultimately he will survive. Yep, both teams stable here in the initial stages. And even though the Infernals ended up whiffing, they did at least zone out the team of Change My Mind, as you were trying to point out. And that's very important against a Rogue Mage. Now Acro getting counter pressured. Lightning Lasso Empire sneaks around the corner. They fear Fried Kitty to deny any sort of counter spell denial. When Poike trades equivalently with that Iron Bark and stays in the fight. And Poike now jumping on top of Leanne to engage some crowd control. Eritross deflects it away for now. Eritross with great defense there. Mortal Coil denied Fried Kitty. Fear denied Minpoike. Octagon definitely showing that they're a top caliber team. Definitely changed my mind. Main target in this matchup so far is Empire. I think if the game does go on late enough, Eritros becomes a decent target for the assassination rogue. Um, and I think that's definitely a strategy change that changed my mind can implement a little bit later on in the game. But for now, Eritros is just way too difficult to take down. So putting most of your attention on Empire and just trying to avoid Eritros at all costs. Avoid the Shadow Furies, avoid the Chaos Bolts, avoid the Fears is the name of the game for Change My Mind. Yeah, most certainly. Finally, pressure here for Change My Mind going after Empire. Crowd control secured onto Lee and but Empire already in a great position far away from Acro and Eritros once again taking good control of the enemy team while his healer is crowd controlled. So as I said earlier on in the day when you're playing with double spellcaster, so in this case a warlock and an elemental shaman, Empire is the one being attacked. There's a lot of pressure put on you as the member of the team being attacked. So your main priority is to stay alive and position yourself in a spot where your team can assist you and counter pressure. So Empire ran into the middle of the map so his team could deflect them away, then use the gateway to escape to safety on the opposite side of the map. Now, if you're the member of the team not being attacked, so in this case, Eritros on the Warlock, your main job, first and foremost, is to do as much damage as you physically possibly can, but also n notice the moments when your healer is in crowd control. So right now, with that red box next to Minpoike, that is a cheap shot. But now that that red box has disappeared, now a blind, now he uses Trinket to remove that. Whenever there's a red box next to, or sorry, next to Leanne's frame, it's Eritros's job to then use Fear, Mortal Coil, Spell Lock, Shadow Fury, all of his crowd control and his toolkit to stop Acro and stop Fried Kitty from attacking their targets. So Eritros needs to see those windows, deny the windows, and then look to counter aggress immediately afterwards. So far, they're doing a great job in terms of denial, but their counter aggression has been lacking. Leanne actually a little bit uh, behind in mana. I think that's because Fried Kitty, he is playing the Kleptomania talent to empower his spell steal. It makes it a 30 second long cooldown, but he can remove every single heal over time effect that Leanne has up. So if they get any crowd control on Leanne, they press the spell steal, Kleptomania removes every single one of those heal over time effects, and that becomes very expensive for Leanne to put up all those heal over time effects once again. And Poike sitting down for a drink. I think he's going to be resetting his mana to full. Fried Kitty oh. traded out one of his ice blocks. And Big Chaos Bolt. Huge punishing? throw. I'm not exactly sure. Did Fried Kitty just trade that out as a crowd control breaker? I'm not well, sure. He's throwing the game away right now. I mean, Poike's caught in a fear. I think he was trying to respect the Chaos Bolt. Eritros ramped up for a massive one. So rather than taking it and maybe dying, he just wanted to ice block and immune it. But he was really healthy there. I'm not sure if it was necessary. And it almost cost his life later on. But now he's trying to counter aggress, activating that Icy Veins. And with that cooldown activated, you can see Eritros trying to control the battlefield with some fears. Now trying to counter aggress. Since Leanne is not in crowd control, there is no box next to his frame. Eritros is focusing more on maximizing his damage and counter pressuring change my mind. Leanne now, wow. I'll change my mind are pinned against the pillar is trying to drink or generate his mana and build a lead there good awareness all around by octagon yeah definitely fried kitty that was a scary moment i'm not sure exactly sure what he ice blocked but he will have his third ice block coming up in around five minutes once cold snap does reset and he should be feeling pretty healthy with one available 
Acro now taking a little bit of pressure, activating his faint. So very low cooldown damage reduction that rogues have. If you time it well enough, you can avoid a lot of damage. Acro now with the death from above, kidney shot onto Empire, looking for some pressure. That's a talent that uh, Acro is using. It gives him a little bit more mobility in this matchup. You can see him fly into the sky and then take a nosedive right at his target. It's a decently long cooldown, but when it is active, it allows him to stay on target a little bit longer. Yeah, it definitely does. Leanne making a trade here for his Gladiator's Medallion on Blind, a typical trade that a healer is going to make as it is the longest instant crowd control available from the team of Change My Mind. And it lines up perfectly with a two-minute timer. But as a healer, if you make that trade, what you open yourself up to is a swap. So I'm curious if Change My Mind are going to change targets now and go after Leanne in the next attack. It doesn't appear to be the case as Acro has already committed his Vanish aggressively onto Empire, but now Eritross looks to counter-aggress. Tons of damage as Acro overextends. Cloak of Shadows at very low health, almost going down. Bit of a misplay on the part of Acro Lulz as he got over-aggressive against Octagon, and that's the counter window that I was talking about. Eritross takes full advantage. Yeah, excellently done. Good counter pressure by Octagon at 7% dampening. Things are starting to heat up. Minpoike now caught into the fear. Acro really doesn't have too many defensives. He has to be careful now with no Cloak of Shadows, no Vanish. He just committed his Vendetta, but he has to run on it and really not able to capitalize on that offensive cooldown. That's not the position you want to be in. Has changed my mind in this matchup. All three members look to retreat. Acro now moving in, gets the growth silence on Empire, trying to make something happen for his team, but stuck in midfield. Eritros has just been punishing Change My Mind so much in this matchup so far. All right, Empire exposed in midfield, taking huge hits, but Leanne is able to recover quite effectively. Now at 10% dampening, it is still an evenly fought fight at this point, although a close couple close calls for Change My Mind, and in deep dampening, a close call like that is going to be a kill. Octagon need to keep a level head here as the newcomers in a newly formed roster, obviously with good experience with Leanne there as a BlizzCon competitor, as well as Eritross on that Destruction Warlock. Empire is doing a solid job for his first showing as well. Octagon could be a strong newcomer in the tournament scene. Let's see if they can pull it off here against Change My Mind in the blind pick, where I would have said that Change My Mind actually won the composition advantage, but in terms of pressure, Octagon are all over them. Yeah, that is true. There is good pressure from Octagon in this matchup. 15% dampening. Ironbark gets connected by Minpoike. If we look at mana, Leanne has a slight edge at this point, but Empire is the one that could potentially fall. Acro still all over him. He has the Vendetta available in 27 seconds, but Empire, he still has the Astral Shift. He's just kiting, and if you pay attention to Empire's positioning, basically what he's trying to do is bring Minpoike, bring Fried Kitty, bring Acro into the midfield so Eritros can really tee off with the Chaos Bolts and the Fears. That's the main objective. Just kite in the open, force them to cross the map. But Mifoike, intelligently, he's going to be sitting down for a drink, looking to reset his mana. And if he gets it off, all of a sudden, there's a big mana lead here for Change My Mind. All right, we see Minpoike caught in crowd control. They can't afford to make any mistakes, but Empire is the one who's taking the brunt of this exchange. Most certainly as Acro goes in to maybe net a kill for his team, he's getting counter-aggressed by the Chaos Bolts. Can Eritross pull off a kill before Empire falls? We're about to find out here. Acro so low on health. Maledix coming in. Empire gates to safety, but Leanne gets caught. He wasn't able to gateway along with Empire. Double Mortal Coil, Lightning Lasso with no trinket. Huge Chaos Bolts in game number one. Barely able to stay alive. Counterspell denies that lightning lasso. Now Acro on the attack. Kidney shot, smoke bomb gets dropped. Huge damage. Mark for death and venom. Tons of pressure. Empire holds on. Gladiator safeguard proccing a shield, allowing Leanne more time to breathe and recover. Eritross out of the fight, though, in that polymorph. He cannot counter aggress. Vendetta gets popped, but Acro unable to really dish out a ton of damage just yet. Yeah, manages to get the restealth. Double growth, silence. Lightning lasso coming in from Empire. Good backup there by Fried Kitty. Blink in, gets the counter spell. Acro looking to get aggressive on Empire. There's Iron Bark available for Leanne, but that's the last line of defense. Once that fades, change my mind. They might just be able to push Octagon over, especially if they have any crowd control on Leanne. And unfortunately for Octagon, Leanne's way behind on mana. And Poike sat down once again, got a drink, completely refreshed his entire mana pool. The only pressure point here for Change My Mind is Acro, and I feel like if he plays safe enough, it's going to be really difficult for Octagon to take him down. Yeah, it will. We see Inver Infernals have landed. Eritross ramping up with that Reign of Fire, trying to get that Supremacy stacked, and a free cast of Chaos Bolt. This next Chaos Bolt from Eritross could net a kill. 
if they can't deny it. The Shadow Fury and Poiki. Air Trust needs to get in line of sight. He fears Fried Kitty, hopefully, to get him in line of sight, but un unfortunate pathing. Air Trust's timing with Supremacy is full. This Chaos Bolt could hit huge. Iron Bark soaks up the hit, as well as that feint. Good reaction by both Acro and Minpoike, denying that Chaos Bolt window. Fried Kitty line of sighting the follow-up Chaos Bolt as well. Both Ice Blocks now available deep into dampening. Mana basically even as both these teams will continue swinging. Acro Shadow stepping into the fight. Comet Storm to follow up, but Spell Lock secured on Minpoike, potentially putting him behind. No follow-up. Acro and Fried Kitty look all right. Double Mortal Coil, but he polymorphed the Mortal Coil. Fairy Trust not able to cast any spells off the back of that. Lightning Lasso gets denied. Maledict actually committed here by Fried Kitty over onto Empire. And Poike crossing center fields has initiated crowd control chain. Can he get the chain? He gets wind sheared by Empire. Good denial on part of Octagon once again. Yep, Lian did manage to sneak away and get some mana during that exchange as well. So evening up on mana with Poike. Poike with the Innervate should be able to keep his team stable. Bash on Acro. Do they have the damage to take him down? Safeguard keeping him alive for now. Cloak of Shadows in the nick of time. That new trinket gladiator safeguard keeping him alive in those critical moments. Iron Bark connected by Min Poike with a triple Shadow Fury coming in from Eritros. Nicely done. The pressure's not over here for Octagon. They're really looking to take down Acro. Yep, most certainly Acro will be a vulnerability and a liability deep into dampening as he is the only melee member of this match. If he overextends his positioning, he will be exposed to the Spellcasters, Eritros, and Empire. And he may opt to just play defensive until he has Cloak of Shadows in a minute and 30 seconds. I wouldn't even blame him here in the lower bracket as his team faces elimination from the competition. Petition. Eritros with Dark Soul active is looking to ramp up his damage. This is a big window, and Ari Acro is disrespecting it. Minpoike tries to buy time with this Iron Bark. It may not be enough defense at 40% dampening. Wind Shear onto Minpoike's heel. Eritros sets up for a Chaos Bolt with that Dark Soul. Tons of damage. Smoke Bomb denies the follow-up one. Good reaction by Acro, but Leanne gets into the bomb to start healing up Empire. Minpoike tries to get a chain initiated off the back of this bash, but not able to find it. Leanne's now out of crowd control, desperately trying to stabilize Empire here. Vendetta dealing tons of damage at 42% dampening. Empire makes a trade to re-stabilize, but gets cycloned at low health by Minpoike. Both druids basically tapped on mana, but Lian has actually managed to get into stealth, maybe sneak away and get a drink. Minpoike is looking for him in stealth as well, immediately That's jumping it. on that, and now Empire is ultimately getting crushed under the power of Change My Mind in game number one. Good showing by Octagon, but I can't say that I didn't expect it otherwise. Potentially, we see Octagon go all in here in game two. It would be interesting to see what happens if they go head to head with all out aggression. Definitely. We'll have to see what their strategy is. In the last game, we really saw Empire um, kite Acro, Fry Kitty, and Minpoike into the open, which allowed Eritros to actually get some pressure rolling. And I think, once again, that's going to be the name of the game. You just want to allow the Destruction Warlock to get as many casts off. Uh, they have a lot of control, a lot of burst damage. The only problem with the Destruction Warlock is you can easily get line of sighted. So Empire just has to make sure he's always having someone from Change My Mind in the open exposed for the Destro Warlock to actually get some damage. All right, Eritros once again with good defense, Empire with great counter engage, but a counter spell equally matched by Fried Kitty as both teams stabilize through the initial attack from both sides at this point. And it looks to be the case that we're going to play at center pillar. Triple Shadow Fury, Empire lining up a Stormkeeper, but Icy Veins is lined up. They're actually going after Minpoike, maybe trying to catch one of the Druids off guard. With Feral Affinity, you lose out on some damage reduction, and you lose out on Frenzied Regeneration. So Octagon may be looking for that opportunity to take down Minpoike. He's got to be ready for that, because one Lightning Lasso and a Chaos Bolt could be curtains. Yeah, definitely. Acro's still holding on to that Vendetta. We'll have to see when he decides to really pull the trigger with that. That's the main offensive cooldown that an Assassination Rogue has in this matchup and it's likely gets paired with a kidney shot and the kleptomania coming in from fried kitty and that's what makes a lot of these setups coming in so devastating there's fried kitty uses the kleptomania full kidney shot secured on empire do they use the vendetta exactly what i said now empire forced a trinket use the astral shift he's looking to run away leanne trying to stabilize his health but that was a nice clinical setup coming in from change my mind and what ends up happening when those setups consistently land is octagon falls further oh behind. huge hit on acro 
making a trade there in what could have been the final seconds of this second game. Empire and Acro both equally behind now in this fight and opportunities for both sides. Smoke Bomb is available. Acro could make a big play here should he decide to commit it, but it is not necessary as Leanne is locked out in Cyclone. But they could Smoke Bomb at the end of the Cyclone. I'm curious to see if they go all in. Another Cyclone secured. Empire could go down. He tries to gate to safety back in the starting area and he manages to do so with Eritross getting a couple of conflagrate roots that trenched entrenched in flames honor talent paying its weight in gold right now preventing acro from reconnecting to his targets once again good defense on the part of eritross definitely empire still managing to stabilize off of that defense leanne's mana not doing great the hardy down to around 50 percent and Poike playing the feral affinity founds the pan finds the pants done onto leanne into a full cyclone now empire in a lot of trouble and i think that's one thing we haven't talked about too much is min Poike getting these restyles allowing him to stun up leanne into a full cyclone consistently is allowing uh fry kitty and acro the setup potential where they can actually get some damage rolling onto empire so i like what min Poike has been doing so far in this matchup now i'm at yk going down for a drink i feel like being the all-star of this team so far in this series yeah most certainly octagon locking the small map makes me think they wanted to deny drinks more easily and that's definitely something they could do in this specific match but they've actually been the ones behind on mana and i'm going to attribute that to acrolol's assassination rogue bringing in the wound poison it brings a mortal wounds effect which reduces healing by 25 percent whereas team of octagon don't have access to that same healing reduction which is costing more mana from leanne because he has to heal through 25 percent reduction of his healing which is ultimately costing him a lot of mana also changed my mind doing a lot of good hit and runs and this during during this window of opportunity with infernals down acro definitely needs to run eritros is trying to set up off the back of a fear shadow fury good combo by eritros chaos bolt connects gets deflected by iron park of minpoike now eritros actually using the gliders medallion to hold acro in place beautiful conflagrate route into the lightning lasso great combo of crowd control initiated by octagon but ultimately gets dropped by change my mind potentially not bash Acro really disrespecting the damage there, finally trades the Cloak of Shadows and stays in the fight. And of course, later in the match into deeper dampening, situation like that is more than likely going to be a kill. Yeah, definitely. Acro does have his Vanish available, so he does have that safety net if he really needs it. Vendetta, as well as the Smoke Bomb now available, but all three members actually Aerotross doesn't have his trinket, but I feel like he's not an optimal target here. Kitty Shot gets dropped out by Acro onto Empire, looking for some damage. Kleptomania as well, but Leanne responds with the Iron Bark, exactly what he needs to do. Minpoike getting stopped on his Cyclone as he looks to crowd control Leanne. Good denial there by Eritross. Now because of that, Empire should be completely fine. Leanne actually triggered out of the blind. Now there's a window of opportunity where they might be able to take down Empire. What we're going to want to see is Minpoike land a re-stealth. If he can re-stealth, move in, get the pounce into Cyclone, Cyclone, Cyclone on Leanne with Vendetta uh, used by Acro on Empire. That's definitely a chance for them to close out this game. Uh, in the next couple of setups. It would certainly be a window of opportunity for Change My Mind to jump through. Crowd control on Lian. It looks like Empire is going to evenly trade with Acro's Vendetta. I think that is a smart response. However, opens him up to a smoke bomb kill. Empire cannot afford to move too far away. The pressure is still mounting. Change My Mind are looking to mount an advance to match point here against Octagon. Empire is looking to make an escape, but gets stunned. There's the smoke uh -oh. bomb. Lian is very far away and trying to cross the map, but gets clotheslined by Minpoike. Great crowd control by Simon Poike, Acro now has to carry the team with damage. Can Fried Kitty get in line of sight? He's got Frozen Orb. I'm very surprised to not see it already dropped. Frozen Orb, Acro reconnects. Triple Cyclone Chain on Leanne. Might not be enough. Empire's managed to kite it out just long enough to stay alive. Yeah, that was nicely done by Eritross. Got a nice fear on the Fried Kitty, and unfortunately he wasn't able to get any damage off during that crowd control chain. Unfortunate for change my mind. They could have closed out the game right then, right there. Now at 6% dampening, things are starting to heat up. Leanne has a mana lead right now over Minpoike. Basically twice the mana. Minpoike's going to have to look for some drinks in this matchup um, relatively soon if he wants to stabilize his mana. Yeah, but they picked Black Rock Hold to deny drinks from Minpoike, so if they don't, it would be a little bit of a toss-up. And right now, Minpoike didn't actually get any mana back off that. His, chain is, his team is actually initiating crowd control to try and end the match, so rather than sitting down and drink. He's going to move in and get a Cyclone Empire isolated once again. He needs four more seconds. He's going to use that Demonic Gateway to escape the Entrenched in Flames Conflagrate Route into a Mortal Coil. Good crowd control by Eritross, buying time for Empire to catch a couple of healing surges and start to stabilize. Leanne, though, not able to get... Now finally reconvening. Lightning Lasso gets counterspelled. 
Good interrupt by Fried Kitty, allowing Acro to escape safely. Vendetta available for Acro. I'm curious to see if he's going to mix it up, go after a different target, as I believe both Restoration Druids are playing the Feral Affinity. I'm going to double check that right now. Yeah, definitely good opportunity to take a look at some of the talents. Fried Kitty getting low, getting bursted down into the first ice block. Really good damage there by Empire. I don't think Aerotross was really able to help him out too much. Fried Kitty still not topped off, and Poike hasn't found the heels. Finally connecting a huge one. Full blind now onto Leanne. Kitty shot on Empire. Polymorph on Aerotross. Beautiful cr triple crowd control coming in from Change My Mind. Now a sap on Leanne, forcing him to trinket and throw out the Iron Bark. Empire did manage to hold on to his trinket and his astral shift, so he has those defensives available for the Icy Veins rotating up here for Fried Kitty. Now Octagon has been doing a good job making sure they always have at least one answer for these offensive pushes coming in from Change by Mind. Yep, good trades on Octagon's part. They've definitely got solid defense, but in order to win a game, you eventually have to find a way to attack and kill your opponents. So even though they're looking impenetrable, if they can't find any opportunities to attack, they're inevitably going to lose. They've got Call Infernals available in a minute and 42, but now they need to focus on surviving as the Frozen Orb has been placed. The back end of the Vendetta Exchange, Eritros of Empire with good coordination there. Shadow Fury into a thunderstorm. Acro is slowly marching his way back to the fight, biting a Chaos Bolt by Airy Tross. Mana now in favor of Change My Mind. It's looking good for them here on Black Rook Hold. The small map pick by Octagon is sort of backfiring. Maybe not. Fear into Chaos Bolt. Multiple ca I would have liked to maybe seen those cast on Acro with no Cloak of Shadows, but the Mage Fried Kitty is still a better target than no target. Yeah, definitely. Hey, you might as well dump that damage where you can, although it seems like in these matchups so far, Nacro really has been the best target for them to go after. They did manage to get an ice block from Fried Kitty, but I think forcing Acro to use his Vanish, use his Cloak of Shadows defensively is a good opportunity for Octagon to limit the offensive capabilities of Change My Mind, especially as we move a little bit later. Full stun on Leanne, gets caught into the pound stun. Is there going to be a follow-up Cyclone? Unfortunately, Mimpoike gets denied. Nicely done by Empire once again. He's been playing such a good... Uh, solid defense in this matchup. Acro has a vendetta coming back up. Then Fried Kitty uses the Icy Banes. They need to try to pull something with the Icy Banes cooldown. Oh. That'll create a window of opportunity. But a big swap over on him in Poike. Smoke Bomb gets dropped out offensively and defensively. And Poike keeps himself alive off the back of that Gladiator safeguard. Now Empire still getting low. Full blind on Leanne. Opting not to trink it just yet. Really wants to have Acro commit his vanish. Acro does. Blind full sap. Empire could be in some trouble. Leanne forced to trink it out. He wants to connect that iron bark as soon as possible, but he's playing it a little bit greedy, holding on to it. That 30% dampening it might be difficult for him to actually top off oh. Empire at this point. I would have liked to see the lightning lasso saved and used on Minpoike. They already got most of his defense. Now with the call infernals down, maybe they could have taken him out. Instead, Minpoike just retreats away and looks to sit for a drink. Acro will equivalently exchange his cloak of shadows for Minpoike to regenerate mana, but Leanne as well is sitting down for a drink as both teams look to reset their mana pools at 30% dampening. Changed my mind, come out ahead though. The only thing that's going in favor of Octagon is the cooldown management of Minpoike being a bit misplaced and mistimed. I do want to see them attack Minpoike. That feral affinity is a risky choice on his part, and if he gets caught for even a second out in the open at 32% dampening, he's definitely going to be taken down. Let's see if Octagon can find that opportunity to open up on him in Poike. And Poike leads the start of this fight with a rake stun on the Airy Tross, but no follow-up just yet. Looking to try and crowd control Leanne out of this bash. They do find the Cyclone. Perfect timing here. Counterspell to deny any support from Airy Tross. Empire on the run, but held in place from Ursul's Vortex. This is well coordinated by the team of Change My Mind as they look to stay on target and close this game out. Airy Tross stalls it up for a couple seconds. Triple crowd control defense on him. His part, Empire manages to sneak into the starting room with that demonic gateway, utilizing the map quite effectively to stay alive through that kill window. Yeah, Empire still low. Garot Silence activated by Acro as he looks to close out the game. There's a full kidney shot. Leanne gets Cyclone. He wasn't able to activate the Iron Bark. Empire could just fall. Astral Shift does get used. Gladiator Safeguard as well. That's one of the last lines of defense Empire really has available to him. Ooh. Nice offensive Cyclone coming in from Minpoike. Minpoike has been dominating in this matchup. Leanne tries to shut him down with a bash. Acro assists him with a Garot Silence as well as a stun over on the Eritros. Eritros with a nice counter on to Minpoike. Minpoike is getting low. Bark skin, Iron Bark. Everything has been committed for him to stay alive, as well as his trinket. He's still not out of the woods yet. Acro looking to counter pressure. Empire. Leanne has to respond with his Iron Bark. These setups from Octagon on him and Poike really punishing this offensive play have been the best chance they've had so far in this match to win, but I don't know how much longer Empire can really hold on. I'm not sure either. He's doing his best here, 
Pinned down at the pillar. Leanne still locked down in crowd control. Empire Pre Ghost Wolf's the setup at 41% damp, and he's not nearly going to have enough healing to sustain himself and change my mind. Look to advance to match point. I thought Empire was going to strike back. They need a comeback train. Choo choo if they want to. Can they press the tickets to get aboard is the question. I was starting to think that they're not going to be able to. This is looking a little bit desperate, but at least on Tolveron Arena, they've got a lot of open space to work with. Yep, definitely the biggest map in the pool. Now let's see what happens. Acro and Stealth moving forward. Both of the mages are in visibility right now. They can't see basically anyone on the map. They have to rely on their teammates to tell them where exactly these targets are. Um, and we'll have to see. Uh, Saza, he's going to be opening up with the Blizzard midfield and then Poike behind the pillar. Full sap onto Eritros. Who is Acro going after? Still sitting in blind. It looks like... He wants to get a full Garot silence onto Saza and change my mind. They're going to be actually going after Saza in this matchup. Full blind on Leanne. Iron Bark gets connected. The CC chain got broken up. Nicely done. One Maledic gets used by Acro, but I feel like Saza is going to be completely fine during the initial stages of this game. All right, Eritros trying to line up a ton of damage here early on towards Acro. Good crowd control coordinated by the team of Octagon pulling some vital defensive cooldowns from the lineup of Change My Mind and forcing them to play defensive at the pillar. Now we need to see that triangle positioning. Eritros on the right, Saz on the left, cornering the team of Change My Mind so at least one spellcaster will freely cast onto the opposing team. Change My Mind decide to dogpile on Eritros, burst him down a bit, and then cyclone him to deny incoming healing. Now Minpoike looks to jump onto the healer Leanne and initiate crowd control of his own, trying to line of sight but not able to squeak out of the corner corner just in time. Vendetta has now been committed for Acro, but because Minpoike's crowd control was broken up, it's effectively doing nothing. Yeah, Eritros looking for some Chaos Bolts on to Acro right now, as he seems to be the ma main pressure point stuck in midfield. And Eritros is going to have a field day in this particular matchup. Fried Kitty and Minpoike have to do a really good job with Polymorph and Cyclone in order to deny a lot of his incoming damage. So far, Saza has been able to easily survive I'm curious to see how mana plays out in this matchup. Both mages are going to be having Kleptomania, so what ends up happening? The Fried Kitty decides he wants to use Kleptomania and remove all of Saza's heal over time effects. Saza can then, in return, take them all back. It's a jackpot, Kleptomania, double heal over time effect. The one thing I could see Fried Kitty doing is actually using a macro, a cancel or a macro on all those heal over time effects, and then Saza has no opportunity to take back those heal over time effects. Definitely be a top-level decision if he's able to execute that. We do see some burst here, but deflected by Eritros. Eritros looking to set up maybe for an ice block push. Not able to find it just yet, though. That counter spell denying his devastating damage for a few more seconds. Now Saza on the back foot as Fried Kitty looks to close this series. Temporal Shield, though, bounces Saza back into the fight. Now Fried Kitty exposed in center field, taking heavy fire, having to blink out of line of sight. Leanne repositioning, but Acro now getting blown up as Eritros and Saza switch their attention to him. And much like the Death Star look to eradicate the team, change my mind. If anyone is caught out in center field too long, they will basically get erased. Yep, that sounds about right for a Destruction Warlock and a Frost Mage on this map. They can have a lot of damage available to them. Unfortunately, Empire's not in this matchup, so he won't be able to strike back, really just relying on his teammates in this matchup to get it done. And so far, the composition for Octagon has worked out quite well. But Enpoike is now sitting down for a drink. He's going to be evening out mana, potentially just going to full. And I think both Druids are going completely full mana. Fry Kitty seems to be the one that's in trouble. Infernals get dropped off by Eritros. Mortal Coil gets cast out as well. Can he find the damage that he needs? But I just feel like Fry Kitty and Acro and Poike, they can so easily line of sight so much of the pressure that Eritros brings to the table. And if Acro can get consistent restyles in this matchup, he's going to be able to set up for his team. And I actually want them to start punishing Eritros if he's just marching in behind the pillar like this. Just put some pressure on him. Although he doesn't necessarily take the most damage, you can still take him down if you can remove every single one of the heal over time effects and get good crowd control on Leanne. Leanne locked down in the poly. Murphy predicted this and activated Iron Park, but its defense has now faded. Eritros could crack here on match point. Changed my mind. Looked at 3-0 Octagon. Eritros doing everything he can. Repositioning to the gateway, getting cycloned at low health. Minpoike definitely on fire in this tournament. Ursul's Vortex placed down to try and finish the drop. Smoke Bomb catches Eritros. Huge damage. Perfect execution. 
execution, immaculate crowd control, change my mind, stay alive in the lower bracket. And they are going to feed versus the fake zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth. 